where I have to fill in the table with the missing function values, then determine if the table models a linear function or an exponential function. Function values with a pattern of repeated addition represent a linear function, and function values with a pattern of repeated multiplication represent an exponential function. Looking at the first table, notice how the inputs or x values increased by three. We now need to determine a pattern in the outputs or function values to determine the missing function values and also determine whether we have a linear or exponential function. Just notice how the given function values go from 0 0.75 to 0 0.95 to 1.15. Notice how these function values are increasing by 0 0.2 or 2 tenths each time, which means we have a pattern of repeated addition. The pattern is plus 0 0.2. So by continuing the pattern, we can determine the missing function values, and we now also know that we have a linear function. One point one two five plus zero point two equals one point three five, and one point three five plus zero point two equals one point five five. If we wanted to describe the function f of x in words, we could say f of zero equals zero point seven five, and f of x increases by zero point two every three units because notice how the inputs or x values increase by three in the table. Now let's look at the second table and notice how the inputs or x values increase by two and now let's look for a pattern in the outputs or function values given by g of x. The function values go from four to four thirds and then four thirds to four ninths. Notice how this does not look like a pattern of repeated addition so let's look for a pattern of repeated multiplication. To help us recognize the pattern, let's write four as a fraction with a denominator of one. So we'd have four over one, then four over three, and then four over nine. Notice how the numerator stays four, and the denominator goes from one to three to nine, and because one times three is three, and three times three equals nine, the pattern is we multiply the denominator by three, which is equivalent to multiplying by one-third. So the pattern of multiplication is to multiply by one-third each time. Four times one-third equals four-thirds. Four-thirds times one-third equals four-ninths. So because we recognize the pattern of repeated multiplication, we can now complete the table, and we also know we have an exponential function. Another way to determine a possible multiplier is to take one of the function values in the table and divide by the previous function value. Notice if we use the function value of 4 thirds and we divide it by 4, dividing by 4 is the same as multiplying by 1 fourth, so this would be 4 thirds times 1 fourth. Simplifying before multiplying, notice how we do get a product of 1 third which is the common multiplier. If we use the function value of 4 ninths, we would divide by the previous function value of 4 thirds. Dividing by 4 thirds is the same as multiplying by 3 fourths, so 4 ninths times 3 fourths. Again, simplifying before multiplying, 4 over 4 simplifies to 1. There's 1, 3, and 3, and 3, 3 is a 9. We still get a product of 1 third. Now to complete the table, 4 ninths times 1 third equals 4 27ths, and 4 27ths times 1 third equals 4 81sts. If you wanted to describe the function g of x in words, we can say that g of 0 equals 4, and g of x is multiplied by 1 third, every two units because notice how the inputs or x values increase by two each time. Before we go, let's look at the graph of f of x and g of x on the coordinate plane. If we were to graph f of x on the coordinate plane, we would plot these points and sketch a graph and notice how the graph of f of x is this blue line. Because the graph is a line, 
this verifies f of x is a linear function. And if we were to graph the first three points of g of x on the coordinate plane, we'd have this point, this point, and this point. And notice how if we were to sketch the graph, it's a curve. And because the multiplier is between 0 and 1, the curve goes downhill from left to right. So we have an exponential function, but more specifically, it can also be called exponential decay, again, because the graph is going downhill from left to right, where we say the function is decreasing. I hope you found this helpful.